Hi everybody and welcome to a quick tutorial um, regarding chunks, chunk loading, mob spawning, simulation distance and render distance. Uh, for those who have seen my previous videos that I've made on this subject or some of these subjects, um, not much has actually changed. Um, if we're looking since uh, 1.18 update, we're now on 121, so it's not too far back. Um, there's only been a couple of changes, and um, let's quickly have a look here. A few pointers that we need to remember. Well, okay, obviously we are. This is what we are covering or having a look at today. Um, a chunk, first of all, is a 16 by 16 blocks, and it goes from the bottom of the world right to the top. So from up there all the way down to bedrock or right through bedrock. Um, Eight chunks is 128 blocks, so that's going to come into play with your render distance and simulation distance and mob spawning. Um, a full perimeter is 256 blocks, so that's 16 chunks. If you look, eight chunks is 128 times two, is 256. So, and that always works away from the player. So, 128 blocks that way, 128 that way, that way, up, down, every direction. And one important thing regarding mob spawning is mobs only spawn after 24 blocks away from you. So from the 25th block they can start spawning. So that's a, a very important thing to remember when it comes to mob farms and things. Um, and generally mobs can spawn if you look at these gaps here. So here we've got a 1 block, a 2 block and then a 3 block gap. Now a wither skeleton like so is taller than two blocks as you can see so he needs a three block gap like enderman three block gap to spawn but then you might have a normal skeleton which can spawn in a two block gap now you get obviously your baby zombies and your spiders that will spawn in that little space there it's one block high but spiders need at least four blocks gap to spawn on so there's the one difference again um, but most of the mobs all use that same principle of that spawning gaps. There's nobody. There's no mobs that are bigger than three blocks and things like that, except obviously maybe an ender dragon or warden or something like that, but that's something completely different. Um, so if we look, first of all, this is a chunk. So if I put on my chunk borders here, okay, so we go in the inside, now we're inside the chunk, so you can see where that black squares are so that's the corner there this is the inside of the chunk where these blue lines are running over here so you can see all the way so the red line is into the, the chunk so this is 16 by 16 and this goes from the bottom of the wall to the top of the wall as you can see it goes all the way up to the top that's the chunk all the way so if we ever look at this little uh, grid that i've got set up over here so here we have the center of this big platform. Now this is a full 128 each direction blocks away. So this is a 256 uh, block square more or less perimeter. You'll see the, the, the proper dugout perimeter in a second. So we've got eight chunks going in that direction, eight that way, eight that way, all the way. So you can see more or less the size of what your spawning distance is. So if that's the center and 16, so 24, the same more or less over here somewhere. So from this gap to there, no mobs will spawn. So anything after that, if you consider what that, that's uh, 16 plus, how much? Eight blocks. So this is more or less the center over here. So anything further than that, mobs will spawn away from you. So you get your mob spawning everywhere down here obviously now depending on your light level uh, what mob it is where you are the conditions your spawn proofing all those things but your simulation distance plays a big role in that as well now obviously if you want mobs to be spawning eight chunks away you can't put your simulation distance on four chunks or six chunks. You've got to pull it on the full eight. But something very important, which I've, people have asked before, no matter what you do after eight, 
Okay, render distance is how far you can see. So whether it be one chunk or 20 chunks, you see that distance, depending if your hardware, whether it's console or PC, can handle it. Your simulation distance, you can set up to 8 and everything will work according to your simulation distance. But anything after 8 is not going to make a difference, whether it be a 10 or 12 simulation, it will stay on the same rules of 8. The game doesn't allow anything to simulate, whether it be redstone or mob spawning after 8 chunks. So it's not worthwhile wanting to put your simulation distance up. It doesn't make a difference. And depending on the interaction you've got with the mobs. So you as a player have to basically interact with a mob. So if a mob spawns here now, so here, boom, there spawns a skeleton right there. Okay. If nothing happens to him, within let's say 30 seconds there's a certain time limit okay so if you interact with him you will stay there but if you're standing here in your mob farm and there's a skeleton spawning there and he just stays there for like a minute nothing happens he's going to despawn that's why in your mob farm you have to kill the mobs as quick as possible so that more mobs can spawn so there's a cycle that builds up and it just keeps on going otherwise the mobs will just spawn and keep despawning that's why your, your farm must be relative size and depending on your mob proofing you've got around and your light level and where you're standing and everything so you can process as quick as possible. So if all these mobs start spawning in over here, something has got to kill them as quick as possible. Whether you've got a machine or falling to death or whatever the case may be. Because the people have asked me about setting the simulation distance to a certain distance away from them will get them more mobs. It doesn't mean you get more mobs because your simulation distance is greater. It's how fast you can kill the mobs so more mobs can spawn. Your simulation distance is just the, I would say, the distance away from you that mobs are permitted to spawn. So if you've got four chunks, they will only spawn within four chunks from you, or six or eight. That's how far, okay, so, oopsie, let me quickly do that, let me switch this off here first, okay, so listen carefully, it's how far away mobs are allowed to spawn, not how fast they spawn, so that is what simulation is, it simulates to activate redstone or mob spawning, okay, not how many mobs, it's to activate the mobs basically. So you gotta remember that one. Um, so if we quickly go to uh where is my little thing now? I'm lost here. This place area is so big. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at this here. Um there I've got a little mob form which I set up we can have a look at. So if I quickly activate this quickly here uh, First of all, you'll see this is, see this yellow sphere, this is a 128 block despawning sphere. So you can see it goes to the end where the blocks are, all the way around to the end over there. So mobs will spawn, so let's say that red line we are made over there, this red line is 24 blocks, okay. So let's say 24 blocks, so anything after that, mobs can start spawning. So this is the center. My farm is just past that red. That's where the mobs will start spawning. And obviously this works in a circular way. So this will go all the way around. You know, if I go, let's just quickly make a sort of circle around here. So let's say this is all 24 blocks away. Go around like so. Okay, so let's say that's 24 blocks away from me. So anything after that, mobs will spawn, not before that. So obviously your render distance has to include this. You can't put your render distance, say, on two chunks and then expect to have a lot of mobs spawning. So four chunks will probably be somewhere down here, and then so on and so on. But you are going to set it according to where your farm is as well. If you've got a perimeter, it doesn't really matter, make much difference because... 
you only got to be like say 25 blocks away from your farm and a full perimeter nothing else can spawn around you because you've got a big hole in the ground or in the air but obviously perimeter is a much better thing to use okay so now yeah this is a basic little form i set up here so you can see no mobs can spawn anywhere around here okay so you got this glass area over here so even if i'm standing all the way up top there so i'm further than 24 blocks away and nothing else can spawn around there because you can see this area that's open where i'm standing here so if you see this yeah so this is where the area stops so anything after this where the red is no mobs can spawn because the 128 blocks is up top over there the only things that can spawn is in this farm so if you make your farm on a normal ground you now whether this be savannah desert or whatever wherever this area is if you make it further all the way to the top your farm is included and whatever redstone and collection area you've got down at the bottom so that you can see this is all part of it so if this is not mob proof this year now if this was normal blocks well, let's say let's quickly do that okay let's say that's dirt or grass or whatever the case may be mobs can spawn on there because it's within my 128 block rate radius from me but now we've got glass down here so nothing can really spawn on there okay these animals were spawning on there that's where they were walking onto you just in case you want to know um so you can see now they've got a couple of mobs in there so let me go up there quickly um that's a long way up now with a farm that is built on the ground Okay, so let me quickly switch off that there and you can see a bit better. Okay, so if you decide to make your farm on the ground as normal, you can see that's normal ground, I just flatten it out. Then you're going to make sure that there's still enough mob proofing around the farm as I've got with all the glass there. So if we go in the, my camera here. Okay, so there's the player, there's where you're standing. Now you're 128 blocks up or 120 blocks up. Okay. And the mobs can start spawning now this is just a basic farm so obviously this is not a thing that's going to go much but you can see now you even get pack spawning and that's also very important so this is the only place in this whole area from where i'm standing where mobs can spawn okay nothing else can spawn around here on this glass area obviously okay so now these mobs are going now obviously Depending on how many mobs is in the world, your farm might take a while before it starts going. So now you can see we're getting packs spawning, which is good. So you get more than one mob spawning. And they are spawning inside here. But there is a lot of other mobs still under the ground here and things that still might need to despawn before the farm starts, you know, picking up and getting more spawns. But now you're going to see after a while, with the mobs not dying or nothing happening to them, they're just going to start despawning. So that's basically what's going to happen. So that's the quickest. You need to get your mobs out of your farm, kill them, and then more mobs can spawn. That's why you see videos on YouTube where you now they're saying you get 100,000 uh, um, drops per hour and things like that. That's because the farms that they are making kills the mobs quickly. Uh, it gets them out of the way and more mobs can spawn. Um... Okay, let's quickly switch that off. We can go back down there. That's also one reason why people try and use the nether for mob farms. If you consider a mob spawns, you know, instead of killing him straight away, you teleport him to a different dimension he gets taken out of the mob cap in the overworld or the nether or wherever the case may be straight away then you can then they can just get killed on the other side but because the mobs go through so quickly 
and more keep spawning, you can crash your game if you don't kill them fast enough in the other dimension. Now, since 118, there's been a couple of changes to mob spawning. Obviously, with new mobs that came in, like the goats and the glow squid and things like that, they've got their certain distances to to spawn at. Now, one of the biggest, um, what I would say, changes that were made was to mobs in the nether, where the um, endermen, skeletons, weather skeletons and piglins, things like that, they, their light level has changed where they can spawn from 0 to 11. Now usually, as far as I remember, mob spawning was only for up to level 7 or something like that, and had to be dark depending on how strong the light is. So those mobs can spawn inside nether portals and things like that. So that's why usually nether portal farms are much quicker. But I'm going to put a little list up on the screen and then put it also in the description from a couple of the changes that have happened over the last three updates. And you guys can check that out. Um, now, let me put on my despawn sphere. Okay, so now back to sim distance. Okay, now obviously render distance is just how far you can see. Simulation is where mobs are allowed to spawn from you and your redstone. So if I'm standing up there, it's 128 blocks just above here. So let me quickly open my camera here. So we see this despawn sphere is literally just here where these first blocks are in the ground over here. So you can see nothing will spawn in this cave area down here because I'm far up there out of the, the spawning distance. 128 blocks, so there's no mobs that, that will spawn here. And then it obviously applies up, down, left, right, whatever the case may be. So you can see from, let's just go up over here. This is, should be in line, and there you can see, there's the little platform standing right over there. So from that platform to where I am here, we can see that where the circle gets smaller here, it's 128 blocks. So that applies all the way around, up, down, left, right, no matter what distance you look at. 128 blocks is the max simulation distance. So, but if you want to put your simulation distance on four chunks or six chunks, all you need to do is adjust that your AFK platform is within that distance. So if this farm is only say three chunks high, you need to adjust that you 24 blocks, 25 blocks away from your farm, but at the same time, you're at a certain point when no other mobs can spawn around you. So you've got to remember that. Now, Let's quickly head to a full-on perimeter. Okay, so this is 256 blocks. Up, down, left, right, whichever direction you look at. Now if I go from that corner to that corner, it's 256. But if you go from the center, which is now this little platform. Okay, so the same like we did with that farm there. So I put on the, whoopsie. I mean, despawn sphere. So you can see you're going up, left, right. So you can see there it's just touching there because obviously it's not exactly maybe on the center of the of this area, but that's basically 128 blocks away there. Okay, so if we switch that off, we're going to F4. Now the big difference is when it comes to mob spawning, now you can see, look how many mobs is in here now already. This, this farm will work faster because we're in a perimeter. Mobs always spawn you know, at the lowest block first. So obviously now they can't spawn anywhere in here because the floor is mob proofed. Here's the bedrock, we're under the world. You've got the bedrock and there's glass. They can't spawn anywhere. Now, if here is a spawn area, let's quickly do this. Let's say, yeah, there's a whole bunch of blocks out here where I am. Then they can spawn because it's within 128 blocks from me. But at the moment, 
they can only spawn in this area now if you look at slimes in here as well now slime is a good example where slime only spawn from level 40 and below not above that except in a swamp and that's only at night so slime spawn at night in a swamp at you know, wherever your swamp area is but if you've got a perimeter and you'll make a very big slime farm only below level 40 and you'll have a lot of different mobs that will spawn in this area so the lower your farm and the more mob proofing is around it then you'll get more spawning but now obviously the only way to get a perimeter like this is either digging it out which will take forever um, or you're using TNT and machines or perimeter machines things like that which is not always easy to do the other option is to light your places up now the only problem with lighting up the caves you actually make it you take all the hostile mobs out yes now more mobs can spawn but slimes will still spawn in those caves if there's a slime chunk if if i'm standing now in a slime chunk here's a slime chunk right here okay oopsie this is a slime chunk where i am standing wait where is my thing we got this easy of me i can't place blocks with a camera account okay so there's the farm there now let's say this area is filled up and um let me just go down here quickly okay now here we're standing inside of a cave you light the cave up i put a torch down okay no hostile mobs will spawn but slimes will still spawn now all depending on how many uh how big the cave or how many slimes can spawn so that will affect your farm so there's always something you need to consider when building your farms and you need to remember that your slimes need to be able to spawn in a certain condition now the big slime needs like two or three blocks or three by three space to uh, spawn so if you had to level this farm down let's say we had, let's say that's the roof slimes won't spawn in here because it's too it's too small small slime maybe but the big ones won't so the important thing is to adjust your simulation distance, your AFK platform, and spawn proof your area, whether it be a perimeter or lighting up the caves or whatever the case may be. Um, setting your simulation distance higher doesn't give you more spawns. It just gives more area and a place to activate mobs, basically. But it doesn't mean it's going to increase the rate of your farm. Your farm needs to operate, obviously, accordingly. Um, what is going on? Sheep, what are you doing? That's okay. That's a bit of a weird one. Um, now, some people have asked me before if having your farm above the water improves... No, compared to that there's solid land okay here's a lot of water if to, that actually improves your farm it's a yes and a no question because yes it, uh, it it does improve a little bit because there is no surface area for normal hostile mobs to spawn they can still spawn underground no there's caves and things at the bottom here um, you'll get drowned that can spawn in the water and things like that but there's not too much of a difference. You know, it's not something you'll notice that that much. But it depends also on the type of farm that you're using. Um, so if you can build it over water, yes, you can do that. It will help a little bit, give you more rate. But at the end, nothing nothing beats a perimeter when it comes to you know, spawn proofing and things like that. But obviously not everybody can build it. But if you build it over land area like this, now, mob proof the area around your farm, like you see I did with the glass, and have your AFK spot basically as far as you can so that it just includes your farm. Now, if I quickly activate this again, see like this area, this open glass area, the circle, 
So that must get mob proof because if it's not and I'm standing there, mobs are still going to spawn there. Now you can adjust this. You can lift your AFK spot a couple of blocks up. Then this circle doesn't exist. But the problem that comes in, you need to include your storage, any redstone, anything that you've got down here that's going to help you with your farm. You know, it, there's no point in... Okay, I'm going to set my AFK there. The mobs can't spawn below this little slab over there. But then this chest and hopper is not going to work. You need to have this included. Your storage and your resto must be included. Otherwise, it's a no-go. Not going to work. Okay. Um, I think that covers most of the basics. So we discussed the chunks. Okay, that goes up and down. And mobs can only spawn after 24 blocks away from the player. Um, you can set your simulation distance to whatever you need to. Now, if you want it on 8 or you want it on 4, some servers and things have default of 4 or 6 uh, simulation distance to help with lag and things like that. And um, when it comes to your render distance, uh, if you look at mine, what have I got set here at the moment? Um, okay, so my simulation distance is on 8. And my render distance is on 16. That's not just so we can see more of the area. So obviously now I can drop this down to 8 as well. And you can see it. There's a warning up there. Performance impact high. So that will affect your, your gameplay and everything. And your frame rate. So if I quickly activate, you can see my frame rates there in the left corner. How that changes. Simulation distance and render distance affects that frame rate. If your game is laggy, you know, and you get stuck a lot, and your frame rate is low, that means that something is set to high, and you've got too many things that are working at the same point, and that can cause problems. But now you can see where my render distance is down to eight chunks and you can see there where the walls basically ending i can't see any further now we all like to see the world around us but you can remember that does affect your frame rate and the speed now especially when playing minecraft try and do your things for performance not how far you can see especially if you like building farms so, like I usually advise people, you now if you put your uh, simulation distance on 8 chunks, then make your arena distance 10 chunks. But if you've got a, a decent machine or console or whatever the case that can handle a bit higher, then you're welcome to do that. Okay, I think that covers everything. If anybody's got any questions, uh, just put it down in the comments. And um, I think that will cover all the basics and updated questions for this update. So thanks for joining me, guys, and I will see you next time. Cheers.